welcome, 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 welcome. How are you, sir? Dude, look at me. I look like Castaway. I love it. You ready to build a statue? You look fantastic. <laughs> ready for some semi-final NISA fall conference tournament action is what you look like. Good. Yes. This is my playoff beard. We yeah. started, we started this. So come on. That's, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chattanooga FC pregame live show tournament edition presented by workshop. I am Charlie Milburn and we are coming to you live as Chattanooga FC is preparing for the semifinal match tomorrow night against Oakland roots. SC. Let's go. 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. on the West Coast. And uh, that is following last night's decisive draw against the Cal United Strikers. That's right. That's right. Uh, my name is James Dawson. Absolutely don't want to miss this one. Uh, we're into the semi. So 5 o'clock on BN Sports. Uh, we've been putting out on all our social media channels ways for you to watch that game. Um, my personal favorite has been to go to Redbox, which, look, I haven't been to a Redbox or Redbox website in like 10 years. So it was kind of cool to get to use that to watch the Chattanooga CFC. So, um, so how did that work? So you went to a Walgreens I, <laughs> outside and you... Is it a code? Is that how you watch it? Yeah, we get, you get a DVD for the live stream. Um, the uh, it was I, I believe it's a redbox.com slash free live streaming, and it's they've got channels because I guess the only way to survive is a is a video uh, media company now is to have some live stuff. So they've got BN Sports Extra, the Ocho. Uh, and that's where you'll find your Nissa playoffs. Um, so that's how you can tune in. And, and again, we're, we're putting this out on all social media channels for how you can find the game for, for people that already have streaming services or cable services or whatever. There's easier ways to do it than that. Uh, mm -hmm. than to go to the red box at Walgreens, which is again, not actually how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, I've got a couple of blockbuster videos I need to rewind and take back. <laughs> <laughs> Might have the whole lost series somewhere back here on the shelves. That's to the right. to the one store that still exists. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we have got a spectacular show tonight. Really excited about our special guest. Yes. We are going to be joined by Chattanooga FC defender Nick Spielman. He's going to talk about the tournament so far. He's going to talk about his path to pro. Um, the upcoming semifinal match against Roots, so much more. So you definitely do not want to miss out on that. He's a fantastic player. Really? Anchor. He is an anchor. Uh, we yes. we want to go ahead. Uh, Chattanooga FC wants to go ahead and give a shout out to Vibrant Meals and ESPN Radio 105.1 for continuing to support our boys in blue as they are on the road. Yep. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Well, let's talk about, um, before we get into the the roots and Spielman and, and all that other fun stuff, let's just uh, tie a bow on last night's action. Yeah. Uh, we earned a, I think you could say earn. I think that's probably a safe word. Um, we earned a draw against Cal United. Um, no one would say it was the prettiest football match that we've seen in the tournament. Uh, played in the rain, CFC's preferred way of playing soccer in the rain. Um, but it was just enough to get us through to the semifinals. So, uh, James, right off the bat, give me some thoughts about, about last night's match. So, listen, this is what a homer I am. Uh, I, w I watched the match knowing that if we had a win – or a draw, we were through. Mm -hmm. So when we got the draw and they gave the man of the match to Nunez from yeah. Cal's, I was, I was like, man, I've, I've never seen a man of the match go to someone who didn't win. And, you know, just not even thinking about it. I was so in for our boys. Here, here's what I thought of the match. We played our rest team. That is dangerous. Mm -hmm. That is so dangerous. And it shows the depth. Playing games with two days of rest in between in a tournament style, not starting your long-term veterans, your long-term stand-ins, Juan to anchor the midfield, Zeka up top, not playing Ian McGregor. Like the things that we did and yet the depth of this club. 
Right. You know, someone like Clayton Adams, who I had been longing to see start a game, mm-hmm. get in there. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's proven he's got the skill and knows, um, you know, how to contribute on the field to, to let him get that start. I thought was huge. And we absorbed pressure. That is something that gave me a lot of confidence. David Coloco dropping back, really being an anchor in the D with them needing him with Richard Dixon here uh, hurt. I was so impressed. Uh, with Coloco and just what he gave out of anchoring that back line. So to come out with a draw versus a team that felt like they had to win in the Cal Strikers, I was ecstatic, especially knowing we were resting some of our starters. Charlie, what did you think watching that match? Um, funny you should ask. So I was uh, I was cautiously optimistic going into the match. Um, I really, I mean, all jokes aside, I thought that playing in the rain would be beneficial to us um, solely for the fact that we play in the rain all the, all the time. I mean, we make a joke about it, but it's almost become like a home field advantage to us. Um, and I mean, California never rains. They, you know, Cal United strikers, what they never going to get to play in the rain. So that would definitely tip the scales in our favor. Um, so I was really confident going into it. Um, I've been, I was extremely confident about our defense um, who had given up next to no goals this entire season. Um, I think maybe they've only given up five or six. Nick, Nick will be able to confirm that for us when we talk to him here in a second. Um, so I was, I was really confident going in. Um, I was hoping, especially after that Brian Bement goal, which how great was his uh, Superman celebration. Um, the, the replay is, it's on the, it's on the Twitterverse. It's on our, our Facebook page if you haven't seen it. But uh, Darwin Lom just slides through a uh, world-class Andre Iniesta style pass. It was gorgeous. Right on the money um, to a streaking uh, Brian Bement coming in from the left-hand side to the right. And he just, in one motion, just kind of almost caresses the ball straight through into the goal um, and then runs over to the sidelines, pulls his shirt back, Superman style, and and it was on. I, I love the the braggadocio of, uh, of Brian Bement. Um, I yes. had, I tweeted about it after his first game back watching him every time he touches the ball, I feel like he's going to score a goal. And so mm. he, it, he just has this confidence that just, maybe it's the hair, just this massive, he's let loose almost, you know, baby Afro that I can never hope to achieve anymore due to genetics, but it's just a beautiful thing. Um, so after he scored that goal, I really had the sense that we were going to take command of the game. We were going to put our uh, foot on their throats um, and that was going to be that, but Cal United credit to them. Um, They really in this, in that first half, especially they, they really took control of possession. Um, They applied some serious pressure, which you mentioned in our team. did Well, Um, you know, with the exception of that one, uh, that one Nuno goal that, that brought it back to even, um, we really played extraordinarily well. And um, I think when that second half came on, putting Juan in for Clayton Adams, you could see such a demonstrable change in the flow of play in that midfield, which is credit to him. Um, I mean, it, he does all of those little things so well. And it was really a beautiful thing to see. So I get the feeling and um, – if you guys are familiar with the four, two, three podcast, um, one of their, one of their podcasters, uh, the great footballer, he tweeted um, after the game yesterday uh, that he thought that we were witnessing a Peter Fuller masterclass in coaching just with his, um, his lineup, his players. Um, and not only that, but from a big picture, thinking about how that, that getting that first win, which how, how huge was that against LA force? They didn't, they didn't lose a game um, the rest of the tournament so far. Right. Um, getting that first win and how that set us up for those next two games and how we got exactly what we needed out of those next two games. Um, I mean, really p- proved to be masterful by coach Fuller. Um, so I think that I, I thought it was exactly what we needed. It wasn't pretty probably would have preferred us to, you know, rack up three, four goals and go ahead and win the group. 
Um, but, you know, we'll take what we can get and we're on to the next round. So no complaints from me. We're, we're on to the next round. And, you know, we talked about beating a team twice in a, in a side like the Cosmos. Yeah, I think it's absolutely accurate to say masterclass from Fuller. Uh, we came out a- against a team that we had no idea how we stacked up against. And we put it on them and we won against the force. Uh, you know, th- this game last night, you're mentioning that goal. That goal was clinical. It was lethal. It was lethal. It was a counterattack that you cannot defend. Darwin Lom has got a, an absolute motor in him. He's the most – actually, putting him in Bement, honestly, they are probably the two most defensive strikers I've ever seen wear a CFC shirt. We've had guys that know how to get goals. These guys – antagonize defenders in a way that I haven't seen. Yeah. You know, Dar- Darwin has picked more pockets up there playing a nine role. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so that goal, the hold up, the pa- the slotted pass, the simple finish, it's absolutely what you wanted, but it was against the run of play entirely. I mean, that first half before we brought in guys like Juan, uh, you know, we were, we were on our heels and so to have the class to be able to do that, whatever comes next with the roots, with the championship, I'm confident if we put our best team on the field, if we get the opportunity, we'll score. That's what that told me because we did not have many opportunities in that match last night no. but, or the match uh, versus Cal United rather. But what we did get, we scored. And that's all you need to do in a match like that. So full credit to Coach Fuller. Uh, let's pivot a little bit. Uh, we talked a little bit about the run so far to get out of group with a win and two draws. It's all we needed. Uh, let's talk about the semifinals. We're going up against the Oakland Roots. We haven't played them since I believe it was February of gosh, 20 years ago at this point. Uh, <laughs> I know a lot of folks, they, they see Oakland as being a favorite in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, we tied Oakland when we went to play them, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a game without Ian McGrath scoring. So he did that when we played against them, our first pro goal. Um, and, and they lost one to two versus Detroit, which was very surprising to a lot of folks just because of Detroit's play in this tournament, uh, not a discredit to Detroit. They're a fantastic side, but they hadn't looked in good form. So they pulled that victory off over Oakland. Uh, what do you see in this match? What are you thinking going into it based on group play? Um, well, based on group play, again, as as an optimist, I, I, I truly feel like, to your point about um, CFC with their best team on the field, when, when CFC have their best team on the field, I feel like they can beat any team in this tournament. Yeah. And so um, – what that showed me, what the what Oakland's run to the tournament showed me, or what run to the semifinals rather showed me, is that it really is wide open. I mean, there's uh, we could we have just as good a chance of beating them two to one as we do drawing them, or heaven forbid, even getting knocked out, which we wouldn't draw because we're in the knockout stages at this point. That's right. Uh, so I really. The key, I think, to me is going to be um, Fuller's rotation, um, who he's going to put in to the match at what point, Mm. um, the health of some of our guys. Um, It's great to see Hofstetter getting back. It's great to see McGrath getting back. Um, Eric Panzer getting back as well. You know, all of these guys who had had some bumps and bruises. Um, Hopefully we'll see Richard Dixon um, coming back as well for that match tomorrow. Uh, that's that's going to be the key for me because there's we're, it's going to take our best group and our best effort because we know that Oakland has got um, former MLSer Jack McInerney, you know the guy that um, the guy that stole two points from us in in Oakland in February. Yep. Uh, so we know that they've got some talent. We know that they've got some speed. Um, so they're going to be gunning for us. So I don't know. What do you think, James? This is this is a game where uh, it's going to be interesting to see what lineup takes the field. We've seen uh, Fuller pull, uh, you know, the four four two. We've seen the three five two. 
Um, we've, we've even seen having one striker up top and going with a, a five, four in the center. So I'm curious from a scouting report, what they think is going to line up with Oakland. Well, mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to tell us a lot about what our approach to the game is. Are we putting a lineup on the field to absorb pressure? Are we putting a lineup on the field that we feel gives us the most offensive legs? Uh, when you're playing a team that you drew, We've, we've picked up so many different uh, integral pieces. Sean Russell, for instance, to our squad since that game and even players that would have been uh, hurt or still playing in college at the time um, during that match. So I really think we need to see it as a fresh board. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the coaching staff is going to look at this game based on group play for the Oakland Roots. Ultimately, I think this is a game that CFC should win. Um, and I say that simply because, you know, you mentioned uh, the, the MLS veteran uh, that the Oakland Roots have. I think for a club like CFC uh, that's competed against MLS teams, competed against international squads, they know how to gear up for a big game. And we've got veterans that have been in those positions and delivered those goals. Absolutely. I'm looking I'm looking at you, Zeka. You know, I see this as an opportunity for some of the experienced pros that have come to our team, like a Sean, like a Bement, like an Ian McGrath, to really assert themselves. Um, but I'm going to be very curious to see what lineup we put on the field to to say, are we taking it to them? Or are we going to try and absorb some pressure and counter, which we saw in our game versus Cal United? We're very able to sit back and absorb pressure and be clinical when we have to be. So... It's going to be a great game to watch these these cross country tournaments with teams with not much overlap. They they leave a lot of room for interpretation, you know, and you can only settle it one way and that'll be 90 minutes, hopefully just 90 minutes, you know, on the pitch. We don't know what we saw today in the Carabao Cup. No one needed that. Goodness. No, and, and that's a that's a great point because you know, it is a quick turnaround. It, whoever wins that match is going to play again on Friday. And so Right. The last thing you want is is extra time leading into extra time leading into penalty kicks leading into all of that, you know, all of the drama that comes with that because whoever wins that they're going to have to turn right back around and they're going to have mm. to get back on the pitch against the winner of the Force uh, Detroit City game. Um, you know, one of the things I would love to see is I would love to see a team and a formation similar to how Fuller set us up. Um, for LA force. If you remember the first, you know, 18 minutes or so before that guy um, dropped an atomic elbow on Zeka's face, <laughs> followed by, followed by Richard Dixon and Dwayne Laidley going out. Um, right. CFC played cohesive, fast, clinical soccer. Um, yeah. That was just beautiful to watch. And force had not seen anything like that. They, they didn't know what to do. Their only course of action was to was to drop an elbow on a guy's head. So yeah, come I, off I don't the tight hope That happens. I want to be clear about that. But I do hope that we see that kind of um, that kind of open ended expression, um, free flowing, free flowing soccer. And that was one of the things. If you'd seen, and I know we've got to get to Nick, so I'll be quick. Um, if you've seen the video that we posted that had the interview with Fuller after the game yesterday. He said that he really hopes that this is going to open up the team and get them to play that um, fearless, free-flowing soccer um, that he's wanting them to play. So, I mean, fingers crossed. I would love to see it. I think that would be great. Absolutely. And you're right. We, we can't go more. We don't want to go more than 90, uh, not just the physical, but the emotional that you put in. I mean, a tournament like this, Every game's been a must win up into this point. Every interview we've had so far has reiterated how focused the team is. Mm -hmm. But finals week only lasts so long. You can only stay so lasered in for that next game for so long. So it's going to be interesting to see how it, the game unfolds, making sure that we've got what we need for a championship if we are favored and do come out with that victory. For sure. Speaking of laser focus, um, let's talk about our guest. Uh, we yeah. are joined by one of the most laser focused gentlemen we could ever hope to speak with on this on this podcast. We're not a podcast; we're a live show. What am I talking about? Um, one of the most laser focused guys, Nick Spielman, um, 
defensive back for us, for CFC. He has gotten, he's played every single minute of this tournament so far and has gotten better, I would argue, with every single minute that has progressed. So let's bring him on, Mr. Uh, number six himself, Mr. Nick Spielman. Hey, how's it going? What's going on, Nick? How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Great. Doing well. Doing well, Nick. Great to have you on. We, we've got uh, obviously a ton of uh, tournament questions we're going to want to pile on you as we've been recapping previous matches and talking about what's coming next with the Oakland Roots. Uh, but but kind of before we want to dive in to all of that, we want to we want to get to know and share a little bit of your soccer journey and story. So, um, you know, I, I want to ask, you know, what got you into soccer and when did you realize you wanted to come play for the best club in the world? Uh, what got me into soccer was probably my, my whole family. My, uh, dad played soccer, my two sisters, my brother. So it was just a family thing. And then growing up, I went to Lincoln Memorial university and then transferred to TSU where I met, uh, Cam Woodfin. And then Cam Woodfin got me tied into uh, Chattanooga. And here I am. So we got to thank Captain Cam for uh, bringing you to town, I guess. You do. Cam, nice rice. That's it. <laughs> Very good. So so how has your experience been with, uh, with Chattanooga FC so far? Uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. I mean, it's a, it's a big family, which I really like. Everybody's you know, very welcoming to you. And that's pretty much what you want when you, when you play soccer, you want everybody to be nice because <laughs> it can get tough out there. For sure. For sure. And it feels like that back line, um, particularly have, you guys have really have, have grown together and, and play almost as a contiguous unit. Um, so it seems like that family is particularly uh, relevant on that, on that back line, that defensive side. Yeah, we're uh, we're just really stubborn. <laughs> we don't really like giving up goals. So when we do, we kind of yell at each other and make sure we figure out what's wrong. So that pretty much sorts us out. Just stubborn. <laughs> That's great. What's been your favorite moment so far this season? Favorite moment? Uh, probably beating the Cosmos. Clayton Adams scoring that goal from long range. That was unreal. It was, wasn't it? That was great. What personally um, has been one of your biggest challenges that you've um, overcome this year? Uh, one of my biggest challenges was probably losing quite a bit of weight to actually perform to my uh, best ability. How much did you lose? Uh, 15 pounds, almost 20. Well done, sir. So, yeah, that was probably my biggest, biggest, uh, biggest achievement so far. And can you tell the difference when you're on the field? Do you feel that much, that much uh, quicker? Yeah, I feel way quicker. Not that much quicker, but I feel quicker. <laughs> Just the one step's all you need. So I want to ask you some questions about uh, this game, uh, the la last night's draw with Cal United Strikers. You guys absorbed a ton of pressure. Obviously, you know, playing a lineup that was geared towards the fact that you were going to get through that match and have more matches to come. You put a lineup on the field. You took a lot of pressure. It looked like in the first half. Um, can you just share a little bit from from the backline standpoint, I mean, what did you see out there um, as far as things that were done really well? And maybe what are some areas that the team's really trying to iron out before the match tomorrow? Uh, I think the things we, we did pretty well were not getting dragged out of our back line because they were very dynamic and rotated very well with the ball and made runs in behind very well. So it was just communicating. I thought we communicated very well and just kept kicking, kept kicking the crap out of the ball. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, what was the other question? 
Sorry. Uh, just just wondering about, you know, in, in preparation for your upcoming match tomorrow, was there was there anything Coach Fuller gave you after last night's game where it's like, guys, we've got to fix X or Y? I think the biggest thing we have to fix is crosses into our box and better tackling. I think as a team, we didn't do it very well. But that's one thing I think if we're going to beat Oakland, we have to fix because they have some very creative players. And obviously, we all know who their forwards are and they're well known. So we have to be on the lookout for them as well. We can't give them too many chances. And just to follow up on that, we've we've seen you guys play a back three and a back four um, and kind of interchangeably throughout the season. Have you found that it's been difficult uh, as far as keeping your back line communication down from a sides trap or anything like that with switching between those, or does it seem pretty fluid? Um, it seems pretty fluid. I mean, we all – it's usually – the same guys that rotate in through a three back and a four back. So it's been pretty fluid as long as we communicate and just figure it out. We do it well, I guess. It's the key to life. It's the key to any good family is communication, right? You're right. So I think you, um, you and Alec Reddington are tied as having played every minute of this tournament. Um, how are you able to, stay in match shape and how are you able to recover what is what's your technique for that for doing that uh, i'm gonna be honest i don't really have a technique to it i'm just <laughs> fortunate enough to not suffer any cramps or uh or injuries it's no real technique to it you i'm just one of the lucky 20 ones 20 pounds has something to do with it right <laughs> uh yeah pretty much yeah if i was carrying 20 pounds i'd probably be injured now Crazy. We're definitely glad that's not the case. Yeah, that's me a, too. <laughs> that's a good read. Um, so, so one of the things we commented on before going into this group was there's teams from the West Coast you guys hadn't seen before, um, and and you know with Nissa the way it's set up, you know there's there's teams that it might be have uh, a difficult time to read competition level. What's your impression after these initial games on the overall level of competition in the tournament? Uh, I think it's, I think it's pretty good competition. I think the West Coast teams obviously bring a bit more dynamic movement throughout their team, and a little, I think a little bit more creative. But overall, East to West, I f I feel like it's very even. It's anybody's tournament. It's about the same and level, in my opinion. And you guys have played every team that has that's still in the tournament, and you've you've pulled points from every team that's in the tournament. So that definitely should give you a little bit of confidence um, coming up into this match against Roots. Should uh, should we be lucky enough to advance to the finals? Uh, do you have a preference which team you would you would prefer to play? Um, I don't. No, I don't really have a preference. Yeah, no comments are perfect. I mean, That's a trap door right there, Charlie. <laughs> Whoever they put in the final, I'm sure we'll do fine against. There you have it. So, uh, Nick, without giving away too much, tomorrow night, what should fans uh, that are keeping up with us here, what should they expect against this match versus Oakland? Uh, I'd say a dog fight. In my opinion, I mean, we're both – Two tired teams. It's been three games in maybe seven days. So I think it's just going to be a huge dogfight. And whoever has the little bit of quality at the end to score a goal. Well, it's going to be CFC. And we're going to get it early and we're just going to sit on it. That's my bet. Uh, calling, get a I'm clinical gonna... finish early like we had last night. And we'll be in good shape. Let's knock I'm... on some wood. I'm predicting a, a Nick Spielman header off of a corner kick. That's my prediction. I like that. There you go. <laughs> we did. We did hear from the announcers that that we are dangerous off set pieces last night. That was that was reiterated that our defenders know how to get up and get some headers. Uh, well, Nick, thank you so much. That's that's all the time we have for this. Best of luck tomorrow night. Bring home that victory. We know you will. Thank you. Thanks for having me.
Thank you so much, Nick. See ya. Yep. See you, guy. Wow. Right. Solid, solid <laughs> interview, solid defender. Yeah, you can you can just tell I, that that's a guy that I would entrust my life savings to protect. Just, he's not he's not going to falter. He's he's dead on. He wasn't going to give away any secrets. Who do you want to play? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who we play. You know, we're going to play our game. I, I honestly, I think uh, Charlie. I've never. In all the interviews we've done this tournament, I don't know what Fuller's told these guys, but it's like they're lasered in. They you know, really, <laughs> I mean, there's so much confidence in these guys. It is, uh, it's so cool to see, um, and and maybe it's it's because of the guys that our executive producer Sean Bernie is is setting up for us. He's given us the cream of the crop, but every single one of them, yeah, shout out, salute to Mr. Sean Bernie. Um, the Swiss Army knife of CFC. The guy does That's absolutely right. everything, and we're grateful for him. Um, but no, you're right. Every single guy that we talk to, they just exude confidence. They exude. Um, they exude the the charisma needed. They they know what they're doing, and I mean the proof is in the pudding. They have they have played extremely well throughout this whole season. Very well. Well, we're pros now, Charlie. <laughs> That's we're it. pros now. And as pros, uh, we're not done after this tournament, actually. So I uh, want folks to know there are games coming back to Fort Finley uh, you are not going to want to miss. We've never had this before. These are going to be cool fall evening matches. Uh, we're used to the sweated out. Sun goes down at halftime. Well, this is not that. Uh, we've got games coming up October 17th against Metro Louisville FC and then on the 24th against the Maryland Bobcats FC. Uh, the Chattanooga is scheduled. It's brought to you by EPB, keeping us online, keeping us on air for this show and other things. And uh, as you guys know, it's CFCTIX.com to get your tickets. We've got limited seating simply because we are keeping everyone safe. Uh, we're doing no actual tickets. It's all QR codes. So you go to CFC Ticks, you get the QR codes for your seats. You're sitting safely away from people. You can enjoy the game and feel okay about it, uh, which has been amazing. The games we've had back, everyone that's come out, you, you look around the stadium, all these little patches and clumps of fans and little cheers go up. And I mean, hey, this is 2020, but we're getting to watch our boys uh, which is more than I think some of us thought we were going to get this year. So I'm very thankful. It's been great. The, you know, I was telling somebody today that it's um, it's just enough fans to give you a sense of to remind you what it's like to to be there and and to have you know Section 109 rocking. And it's just enough fans to give you that feeling. Um, but I, kudos to both the CFC staff. And the fans who have come out, everyone has behaved appropriately, um, kept their social distance, you know, done all the right things. Um, so kudos, kudos to them. And just think in October matches, we can actually wear scarves like these. And, 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 and use them for warmth. I mean, that's right. That's right. That's right. I can't wait. <laughs> Not just to throw in the air. That's it. So thank you all so much. Uh, that's all the time we've got tonight. Don't forget. You can watch us, uh, our semifinal match against Oakland Roots tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, be in sports. Um, so we will be sending out on, um, on our social media pages, we will be sending out all the instructions. Hopefully you have it all memorized by now. Three games should have been more than enough. Um, but if not, we got you covered. We'll, uh, we'll give you all the red box um, information that you may need. Um, locations of every red box in the in the city so we'll, we'll got you covered don't worry you about don't it. go to red box guys <laughs> everybody knows this just imagine a whole bunch of folding chairs sitting out in a walgreens parking lot and somebody punching on the screen at red box trying to get the game if we're trying to get a watch party going uh <laughs> walgreens on broad street let's do it it's perfect it's perfect <laughs> all right well thanks so much everybody for tuning in i'm charlie milburn and I'm James Dawson. Thanks so much for watching and go CFC.